Okay guys, this is how to lift a lowered car with the Max Jax lift. Now, I've got a C6 Corvette that's on coilovers that I have lowered down quite a bit. So, I don't have a ton of ground clearance with the Corvette on, on coilovers. So, as you can see, up front, I have a small thin set of race ramps under it. I'll show you a better picture here. So these are the race ramp scale weight set ramps. So basically what these are meant to be used for is drive on the mini ramp, you have your set of scale weights at the end, then you pull your car onto the scale ramp and that's supposed to allow you easy access of weighing your race car or your street car or whatever for corner balancing and all that good stuff. Well. What I did was with these ramps, I bought them so that I could put them under the tire on the Corvette. Now, you could do this with a set of boards, you know, just with some, uh, you know, eight by 10 or, you know, 12, 12 inch wide boards, whatever you want to do. But for the arms to fit under the Corvette, as you can see here, they barely clear as it is with the race ramp. Without the race ramp, there's no way that those arms would clear underneath the Corvette. Now, if I didn't have the zero one side skirts on there, they may fit, but since I've got a lowered car with the, the arrow, the side splitters and all that, I really needed a solution that would work. So what I ended up doing was finding these race ramps. I wanna say I spent I think they were eighty dollars a pair, so maybe I got one hundred and sixty in the whole, uh, the two the two sets. Um, so I think something like that, maybe eighty, maybe even less. I'm not really sure, but I wanted something more official, more functional than just some boards. Plus, these race ramps are super lightweight, so where I store them, I actually store them on top of my cabinets. As you can see over here, I've still got my old race ramps that I don't get a ton of use out of, but. So they're lightweight. I can get them up out of the way and just throw them on top of the Gladiator shelving units and I'm good. Now one of the problems that I had with the these ramps, the race deck, and even my old floor epoxy at my old shop was is if I try to drive up with the fronts on the ground and the rears at the same time, what would happen was the dri the rear wheels, the drive wheels would actually kick the ramps out from underneath the car. Like I'd roll up on it real, real slowly, and then the whole uh, ramp itself would just get kicked because like I gassed it just a little bit too hard. And I'm not even talking like full throttle, I'm talking like partial throttle idling just to get up on the ramp and you know get out of the flat spot. So what I ended up having to do is drive up on the fronts. The arm is just there for show. I usually don't put that out. But what I will do next is put a floor jack under the rear axle of the Corvette. Then I'll get the car lifted up high enough and put the race ramp rears underneath the rear tires. Okay guys, as you can see, I've placed a floor jack under the rear end. Ignore the creaking, that's just my coilovers. These coilovers are by uh, Fott Racing. They actually went out of business for a while. Then uh, a company called AFE Performance, they do some diesel, some LS. As you can see, I have to go under the mufflers, under the sway bar, and onto the rear axle. Now I've got a piece of board, 2x4, crossing the gap. There's the two ridges in the casting on the rear subframe, so I've got the board sandwiched between those. Then I've got the jack. So let's put, put the race ramps in place. Here's one. Let's come over to the driver passenger side. Okay, that's two. Now, as you can see, the race ramp isn't going to be sitting on the edge of the tire. It's because this is almost a 14 inch wide rear tire. It's a 345 30 19. And the race ramp obviously isn't the width of the tire, but I just need to get it under the tire and get the car in the air. Now I'm just going to loosen the Floor jack. Okay. 
Now all I need to do is get all the arms lined up, then I can raise the car. Okay guys, as you can see, I have the arms in place. I have the car raised a little bit. Tires aren't off the race ramps yet. So they're, yeah. These things are still pretty solid. Just raised the suspension up. As you can see, my fire uh, fender wells have distance has increased the spot between the tire and the fender itself. So that's how you raise your car with the max jacks. Put the race ramp scale weights ramps under the tire, drive up on those, and then the rear, jack up the rear with a floor jack, put the race ramps in their place, and then swing the arms out. Now I have hockey pucks underneath on top of the pad, lifting pad, just so that I have enough room to clear the frame and the fender as well as the zero one side skirts put those in place raise the arm up you know just just bump it until you get like close to the frame double check all of the arms and you should be good to go so i double checked everything and let's raise this puppy up <laughs> All right, then you want to put your safety arms in. It's one. It's two. You can get close, but you can never get it right. Where it needs to go. Okay, there you go. Safety arms are now in. All right, that is the Corvette fully in the air, lifted with uh, the race deck ramps, floor jack in the back, as you can see, and you're good to go. Now, oh, make sure those are clipped in. <laughs> I guess I didn't do that. But anyway, yeah, these are just some safety latches that will prevent the arms from moving when you have the car in the air. Like, say you're tightening something or pushing on something, you could actually swing the arms back or forward and that wouldn't be good because you might lose the center of gravity on the car. So that's how you raise your lowered Corvette with zero one side skirts and everything with the max jacks. Now, I know you might be concerned with the roof hitting the garage door, but there's like an inch gap, two inch gap up there. It's real tight, but I've been up there, I've measured it and we're good. Now I couldn't do that with the SS. I, I have to get a high lift door conversion to move the arms of the garage door track up close to the ceiling and that way I could move everything up. But I don't know, that's a bunch of money. I, that's probably, you're probably looking at $1,000. The parts aren't expensive, but getting a guy to move the lift master because the lift master is gonna have to go up. The spring's gonna have to get moved up uh the tracks and all that crap is gonna have to get moved too so but that's a future project that i'm probably gonna do but anyway long story short so that's raising the corvette a lowered corvette on a max jacks i hope this video helps you guys make your decision if you want to buy a max jacks and you've got a lowered corvette with a little bit of extra work you can get the car up in the air with no problem and they're pretty a pretty pretty useful tool i mean i've done clutch swap, I've done two supercharger installs, I've done brakes, big brakes on both the SS and the Corvette. Now the Lexus, that's a whole nother car. I, the Lexus, the frame has a pinch well that you have to buy adapters for and just haven't bought them. So I actually haven't used that car in a lift, but the Corvette and the SS, the Zeta chassis, has flat spots where you can put the arms with no issue. So. Hopefully this video was informative and helps you guys make a decision if you want to buy a Max Jax. Thanks. Thanks for watching my video. Don't forget to like it and if you haven't already, please subscribe.